Hey, what is up everybody, Blades for here and today for you guys another video of Persona 5X. So inside today's video guys, we're going to be talking about Futaba Sakura and exactly what she can do based off the beta skills that we of course know that she has, seeing that this character most likely will be releasing sometime soon. Now before we get into the video, I gotta straight up say it, these are beta skills. These are skills that of course were in the beta and we don't know how they're going to be changed. We do know, of course, no matter what, Futaba is going to be a navigator. We just don't know if they're going to change a lot of their skills. So take this with a grain of salt. But one thing I can tell you is, boy, oh boy, she is cracked. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So for today's video, guys, we're going to be actually utilizing one of the little spreadsheets that was made by Wondering Thomas and some others inside of the P5X character, or at least the P5X Hangout Discord server. Um, I probably will have the link down below in the description if you guys want to go ahead and join that server as well. But you guys see on my screen pop up a little bit of the spreadsheet. Now, this whole spreadsheet has pretty much all the skills that we need to look at, their attribute improvement, at least some of their awareness, and then of course, their different um, passive skills being their potentials. We're gonna take a look at least at her skill one because I'm straight up gonna tell you this character overall does a little bit of both. She helps out a crazy amount with attack or at least offensive type, type capabilities. But with that, she does have some defensive type capabilities, mainly being for evasion. So with her first skill, she's actually increasing the amount that damage, um, at least that enemies are gonna be taking damage based on the amount of attack points that she will end up having. Now alongside of this here, if a party member does use an attack or just a skill, she actually has a good chance to get a clue, which is pretty much one of the things like how we have beats or how we have the, um, what's it called? The flavors and things like that. She has a chance of gaining this. Now this is just a basic gain, of course, on her skill one, nothing like, oh, you have to have some dupes and something like this. No, every time a party member does use one skill, she actually has a chance of getting one of these stacks which is increased to 100%. Now, that is actually amazing. Now, these effects, no matter what, will last only for one turn. This is a prep time for four actions. But with this chance, you're able to actually stack up her clues, especially if you are just going ahead. Once you use the skill any, during that time, anyone who is actually using those said skills will then be able to give her clue stacks. These clues stacks are going to be really important for her in general, just mainly because they're going to be not only boosting just your entire party, basically on attack and things like this, but later on, you'll see that she's actually able to give you either evasion. She's able to give you more freaking um, SP and things of this nature. So she's a little bit of a mix of everything here. Now, with this in mind, of course, we are going to take a look at her skill too. Let me see if I can actually uh, align this up correctly on the screen because I do have it kind of lined up weird, but we have the skill two being desperate support. Now, desperate support is going to be more of your thing that you need to use just in case you're trying to recover more SP or lead, like, let's say your team is a little bit in a bind and you don't want to really take too many hits. Well, with this here, she'll actually consume every last clue that she has, which is very, very much so a iffy skill that you want to use because of course your clues are going to be your livelihood this is going to help you have all your attack and stuff like that this is even going to help her out with her overall just basic passive in general which we'll get to reading that in a second but pretty much your clues are just going to be your lifeline if you use this skill you're getting yourself yes 16 percent more evasion and 20 sp but at the same time you're getting rid of all those clues that can be very very useful but here's the thing for every clue that is actually consumed, your invasion will actually increase by another 1.9%. So yeah, you may actually just go ahead and consume all your clues. No matter what, you're going to get that 16%. But for any extra, you are actually getting a ton more. So let's say you have one clue, right? You got one clue, boom, that gets rid of all my clues. Okay, I only get that base 16%. But if we have more clues than this, we're actually able to get more at least evasion off of that so i think the max that she can go up to is around like eight so that is a huge bonus that we're actually able to get especially if we have all of those clues now at the end of the day this one's kind of iffy i feel like this would actually end up changing because that's actually heck of broken especially for this character but futaba was meant to be that broken navigator anyways so i mean like who knows they probably did it on purpose 
but I feel like this is going to be one of the skills that they're going to end up changing because 1.9% for every stinking clue you have, and you can have a max up to eight is kind of insane because you have to think of how easy these clues are going to be like obtainable. Literally, the skill one makes it so we can just get them off of just attacking. So I don't know if that would be good to keep, to be honest. I don't know if that'd be too heavy. I mean, too um, healthy for the navigator scene, but we'll see. Now going to the skill three, which is morale boost. This is gonna be a single target buff here, which also has a preparation time of eight actions. Now with this, she's able to actually choose a party member who she wants to give a morale boost. And pretty much for every 100 attack points she does have, so of course your base attack in general, she will increase their attack by a 1.1%. This can actually scale all the way to 54.4 percentage, which can really make whoever you're buffing, most likely your main DPS or your sub DPSs, an absolute crazy man. Like no matter what happens, they're going to be dealing some big boy numbers. Now this also will last for two turns. So if you have like a character, like let's say, I don't know, you technically wouldn't use Yusuke for this, but for example, let's take Yusuke for example. You use Yusuke's counter on turn one, you get this buff immediately. Um, this will last now for two turns. When you get hit, you then get that nice old buff to actually use your huge ice counter attack. And then when it comes to his turn again, he still will have that buff on. So you'll be able to use his AOE ice move as well, dealing some more big damage. If you put that into perspective, yeah, it's gonna hit hard. So off rip, that's already good to the pass, or at least good to the skill itself, but there is more. If there is an analysis complete on the field, which is one of her um, actual buffs that she's able to do as well, if she has actually completed this analysis, for every 100 attack points that she has, she's, their damage is going to be increased. So your character's damage is going to be increased by 0.4% to a maximum of 22.4%. So if we do have our analysis completed on at least a enemy, we're able to immediately get more damage out of this. This is literally your last like final stretch type move. So literally the entire battle, let's say you're doing guild boss, you figured out all of their stinking uh, weaknesses and things like that. At that point, you have an analysis most likely completed. With this in mind, every 100 points that she now has, which are going to be building her somewhat into not only just what she needs for her kit, but as, your, as if you're building a DPS as well, for every 100 attack points, she's increasing your damage even more so. It's going to make her absolutely insane and make your DPS even more crazy. Now, remember, this is just her at a zero. So imagine what her passives would end up being, or at least her skills would end up adding on to if she had dupes. So just keep that in mind. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of her, um, I want to say her passives and skills to the right. So first things that you're going to look at is the attribute improvement. This is pretty much just the same thing that all um, of the navigators have where they actually go ahead and share some of their, um, what is it called? Element, de elemental damage and stuff like that by 15% to every party member. This is something that we already know. But what we want to take a look at is her two um, passives being playfulness and aftermath. With potential one, or at least our first passive, a party member, if they use a skill, will deal weakness damage to an enemy and Oracle will gain a clue. So pretty much any time that we use at least a skill that is weakness damage to any of the mobs, she's able to get a clue off of that. That is guaranteeing her a clue. So if you have four characters, they're weak to ice. So who knows? Um, you deal an AOE move. To those four characters or to those four um enemies that is four clues that you get right there boom to an enemy because it says per separate enemy to an enemy so that's four separate clues you got another character who also has an ice move and they're weak to ice boom that's one they use single target that's five clues immediately right there and then your last character has a single target i mean has an aoe as well that is now eight clues immediately stacked he's able to get these clues so quickly that it's gonna make her absolute like her whole kit insane if this is actually going to stay as her potential in general which who knows they might not change it they might change it um but this just even more so makes her value even better now with the potential two of course and then aftermath if she does have more than five clues which you do want to have a lot more clues than normal 
If she does have this, the attack of every party member is increased by 5%. This is actually a pretty decent potential. It's nothing too, too broken, but it is kind of broken at the end of the day because they're already getting tons of buffs in general, just based off her regular kit. But when we do check out the passive two, she's giving you even more of a crazy god dang buff, which is interesting to at least see that we're getting more attack percentage on this. This is literally going to be whoever has this navigator is literally just meant to be a nuke team. Just straight up clear. This is your big boy team. You go for it. And potential two is actually not that bad as well. Now, with her actual awareness, which is just going to be, let's just say her regular passive or at least like her character passive being a zero, um, no dupes whatsoever. It's called collect message. With this, you're actually able to have a party member deal damage. There is a 50% chance. Now, keep that in mind. Whenever you're using skill, there is a 50% chance that Oracle gains one clue. Now, once again, we already have that good old chance of getting it from her skill one and two. But if we go ahead and actually go ahead and have the A0, which is already something built into our kit, as long as we're using a skill that does somewhat damage, we have a 50% chance to get a clue. Now, with this in mind, every clue that we have will increase all party members' attacks by two percent three percent four percent this will all scale based off of her level so if she's level one or level 50 level 70 like if they're or like if your party members are at those levels that is what they can actually go ahead and get so no matter what if you have all your characters 70 or if she's 70 as well you get that four percent attack increase if you have i don't know all your characters 50 she's 50 you're getting that three percent attack increase so that is another stack of attack but alongside this, you're able to also recover eight SP. So this is already nice, right? This is already nice, but it also has a clue stack that gives you even more. If you have more than eight, or at least if you have eight clues, the analysis complete aura is left on the field. This is the one thing that we were talking about with the analysis completed. With this in mind, if you have this on the field, you're boosting the damage of your party members by 20%. Now remember, this goes into play with her skill three. If we do have said analysis complete, in which, uh, where the heck is the thing so I can scroll down. If we do now have said analysis complete on the field, we're able to get even more so attack off of this. So these two things go hand in hand and it absolutely makes her literally the goddess of God dang navigators. This is why I would suggest a lot of you guys to probably go ahead and skip now um i'm gonna have a video saying should you summon for the new navigator and stuff like that and we're gonna pick apart that video and things like that either whether her banner is good stuff like that and actually why you shouldn't summon but this is insane okay this is actually an insane type freaking um what's it called an insane type kit and i'm hoping they don't nerf her because she is my girl i love this freaking character to death but Boy, oh boy, is she going to be game breaking. So with all of this in mind here, those are the skills or at least the beta skills that Navigator, Oracle or Futaba does have right here. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do smash that like button with your forehead and consider subscribing if you are new. We're doing daily Persona 5 videos or Persona 5X videos, my bad. And we're only gonna be doing more. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one today. Um, it kind of depends on at least my schedule, but I am off tomorrow. So who knows? You might get a couple videos. We'll find out. But till then, everybody, peace out.